take on the next step. Learning from history, we know that the only way and the only victorious people on this earth is the people with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no question on it. There's two things. I, I couldn't believe how come Mubarak did not get the lessons from it. One was 1996, where there was an attempt to assassinate Mubarak after 15 years of him being the president. And the Sheikh Sha'rawi, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul, gave him a really hard talk on if you didn't fix what you're doing, your ending is not going to be good. That was 15 years of him being a president. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not let Mubarak, you know what, you're doing bad things, and he did not give you a sign. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Mubarak a sign. And he told him that 15 years within your presidency, you're about to get killed. You're about to meet your Lord. If what you did with your people is something that you like or you didn't like, all this happened in 1996, 15 years from Mubarak being president. Mubarak did not take the lessons, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him another chance with the equal amount of years, another 15 years. So from 1996 to 2011, Mubarak, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you made corruption from 1981 to 1996, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave another chance from 1996 to 2011. And he didn't change. The same thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did with Fir'aun. Sayyidina Musa did not come and tell him Fir'aun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will curse you and, and, and do this. No. He gave him several signs. Tis'a ayat al bayinat A sign after a sign. Here or go. A snake from a... From a from a, a, a stick, my hand, so on and so forth. We have the water turning into blood, frogs, everything, sign after a sign after a sign after a sign. Did Mubarak take the lesson or did Fir'aun take the lesson? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his system is extremely just and extremely powerful and extremely, uh, I don't need the word, I guess. Precise, of course. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even with the zalama, even with the oppressors, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them a chance. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahim, but they are the people who refuse this chance. So, this standing up for oppression, is it something that is going to come easy without any cost? Absolutely not. And I don't want to go through the stories of the Sahaba and Bilal ibn Rabaha having the stone and so on and so forth. This is our history that all of us need to know. But I'm, t I'm, I'm looking at all those beautiful figures that I'm seeing here. And I know that deep down, every one of you, uh, while you're watching this figure, while, while you're watching the movie, you're like, man, if I was just there in Mosul. If I was just there, man, I would have done so much. Isn't that what, what most of us had in our minds? We're like, subhanAllah, man, they're standing in the street. But I'll tell you, no, don't even wish that. Don't even wish that. Because there's people at the time of Rasul Sallallahu that did not go out with him with the, with the ghazawat. Told him, Ya Rasulullah, it's too hot. What Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is going to tell you, what did you do in Brooklyn, United States? What Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is going to tell you, what did you do when, when there was a protest and you didn't go out? Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala is going to tell you on the current, your current condition. You should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use every single one of you to, re to remove the oppression in the Arab world. You should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I don't want to be from those who just go from one event to the Ten Convention to another convention. Oh, we're going to the IRS and the, uh, RIS and the reviving in, in, in Canada. And you're just jumping from one event to another, another, and thinking that, well, well hey, I'm Islamically active. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly in the Quran is saying that مَثُلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُ أَعُوذُ بِلَا مِنِ الشَّيْطَانِ وَالْجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ مَثُلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُ التَّوْرَاتَ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا كَمَثَلِ الْحِمَارُ يَحْمِلُ أَسْفَارَ بِئْسَ مَثَلُ الْقَوْمِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Bani Israel You have the knowledge, you got the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala You got the knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is condemning Bani Israel Israel because they got the knowledge and they didn't act upon it so the, the knowledge that every single one of you have right now is that there is oppression. It's a clear knowledge for all of us. The next step, are we going to be 
like the donkeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning in the, Bani Isra in, in, in the Quran, like Bani Israel, that we received the knowledge and we didn't act upon it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it a horrible example. You're like a donkey just carrying weight. You're not in action. You're, you're a big MIA. And missing in action. I just learned it recently. I thought it would be cool to use it. Okay. So the sacrifice, the sacrifice that we should use there's a really important concept when it comes to sacrificing. We, we tend to, if, if we can actually bring back the, the, the map of the Arab world, you're going to see that one of the smallest country, countries of the, in, in the Arab world that where the, the, the whole revolution started. And to just contemplate on that a little bit, I'd be like, subhanAllah, it was, never, it's, it was never about the size of the country or the number of population or our predictions where the, the revolution is going to start, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a plan for that. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, 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 a, is a, a just. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the adab. So there is no way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will leave the oppressors like that. So victory is going to come regardless. The question is, the question is to the sisters who are still talking. The question is, are you going to be part of the revolution or not? Are you going to be, be a part of the victory that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bring in this dunya or not? Victory is coming. Islam will be victorious. There is no question about that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need your help to do that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you the chance and the, and, and the opportunity to give you that honor. To be part of it. So when you're thinking, never say, well, like, ah, you know what, protest, there's it's so iffy about it, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure about it, it doesn't really uh, benefit the ummah, blah, 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 all this. The revolution started because someone got a slap, he got slapped on the face. Come on. That does not make any sense. Someone, I mean, like, if people in Egypt get slapped on the face every single day, I was about to get slapped on the day too. And the revolution didn't start. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, well, things start without our predictions or, or calculations of the end. If this happened, inshallah, the revolution will start. No. The only thing we have to do is our part. That's it. Don't worry about anything else except, did you do what you have to do? When you heard that there was a an, 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 uh, uh, protest, you went out? Why? Why are you going to go out? This is a key thing. Allah said, I didn't mean to do it in this way, I'm sorry. I, I thought you'd be like, yeah, I went out in your face. I was like, uh, my bad. You went out? No, I'm sorry. So, anyways. You went out? Yeah, you couldn't, you couldn't talk. It's like Allah said, 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 there's a hadith about, about the Rasul listen to this. Listen to how amazing our Prophet is. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, barik wa salli ala Rasul The Rasul one time told the Sahaba, they went to an empty, an empty, uh, an empty desert, desert that was so rough with rocks, and he told them, collect me the, uh, the remaining bones, if I'm, re if I'm remembering the hadith correctly. And after they, the Sahaba start collecting these things and piling them up, they were all over the place. So they start piling them up and all of a sudden it was a big pile of uh, bones or remainers or something. I don't, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not really remembering what exactly, I'm, I'm losing the translation. So Rasul told them this, this is how your small sin will accumulate on you on the day of judgment. So don't ever underestimate a small sin that you do. Because it will come against you. So when I read this hadith, and I was like, SubhanAllah, so every namima, every whatever, every these little small things that we like, ah, it's not a bit. I'm just going to let it slide this time. It will come against you. So if you think about it in a positive way, what also Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is trying to tell them, that every single thing, small thing that you do, would also pile on your scale and help you. So every single small thing that you have, you know what, you know, there was a revolution about must go check Jazeera, and I need to do this, and I need to do that. Little small things. But the creator of this universe, who appreciate every single thing, 
ومن كان يعمل مثقال ذرة من خيرا يرى ومن كان يعمل مثقال ذرة خيرا يرى It's a small it's a piece of a, a mustard a grain of, 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 of khair, of goodness He will see it So you should, you should take this trade with a business with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Yeah, I'll do this so that I get reward The Sahaba had that clear objective Jannah, what I need to do to get there Death is not a sad thing for me Losing someone is not a sad thing for me. We're meeting again. I'm working to meet them. People are dying. My heart goes out because I don't like oppression. But the Sahaba, when they're on their deathbed, they said it clearly. Tomorrow we meet Muhammad and, and the companions. It's clear for us. But are you going to meet them when you're just chilling in this dunya doing and have nothing to do with what they believed in? Of course not. That's why people freak out when they're dying. Those people who are hitting the people in Masr and defending Mubarak, those people, Allah, I don't know what they were thinking at that time. None of them are making over 200 guineas in, in a month. That's, I don't know what is that, $50 a month? Less than $50 a month. Why are you defending an, an oppressor, a dictator? You're making $50 a month, smarty. Why are you beating up people? And they look all the way there, there's orders. Okay, the, the people, see that's why we have to learn our history. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an never said إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَمَانَ and he stopped. Never. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an said إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ وَهَمَانَ وَجُمُّدَهَمَا That Fir'aun and his prime minister and, and, uh, and their soldiers إِنَّهُمْ لَكَنُوا خَطِئِينَ So every single time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Fir'aun, he mentioned the whole package. Everyone. Fir'aun, the minister, the soldiers, everyone. All of you guys are in love. So never be, never be in a silent or be like, you know what? I was forced. Ah, uh, what, what do you want me to do? No. No. The only, the, there is no way on this earth that if you be in a good connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one can have the power over you. No one. So what we need to do, because we just hear so many lectures, and so you need to take it upon yourself as a mission. I need, I need to do something for the soul. I need to do something for the soul. And it's not going to come free of cost. Jazakallah khair, the guys who gave it to drop me off here, the, another Jersey boys. They have midterms and, 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 and they're PhDs and they have to read articles and stuff. But they took it upon themselves, I'm going to sacrifice my time. And actually, it's not like, okay, I'm going to give up some time, even though I have to study. No. They look at it in a way. I'm making a trade with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to put two hours to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me barakah ten hours. Full confidence, peace with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm donating to, to remove hardship in, in Palestine. Palestine been occupied for 60 something years now. It will be, inshallah, we're all going to pray. Our generation, our generation should really believe that we want to pray in Masjid al-Aqsa. We want to pray in Masjid al-Aqsa. We don't want to die in the books of history say that Allah al aqsa was occupied for 200 years and you lived in that interval. You don't want that. You don't want to be from the people that say Allah al aqsa was occupied for 70 years and there's a great group of youth people who came all over the world want to raise the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they made it happen. And it will happen. If every single one really believes in that. I want to make it happen. I want to be part of that. Trust me, don't let the opportunity miss out on you. Yeah, guys, guys in the back. And to, to remember that